All right, applications of percent problems. Uh, these things are actually like really, really useful in the in the real world. All right, percents are probably one of the most um, used pieces of mathematics that we have. Okay, you use it anywhere from going out to lunch, all the way to buying a house, um, to buying just about anything, because there's always tax and it's a percentage. So I recently just refinanced my house. So I am uh, kind of like in the midst of all this. So a real estate agency receives a commission of $13,812.50 from the sale of a $212. Uh, $1,500 house. What is the percent commission? Now, um, I know these are big numbers and they kind of don't seem like, like how you would compute a grade. But if I asked you this, Cody, if I said, Cody, you got a 13 out of 21 on a quiz, how would you figure out what your percentage was? What would you do, Cody? Divide by each other and times it by 100, I think. And that's what we're gonna do here. So we're literally going to do $13,812.50 divided by $212,500. So let's do that. I'm not that good, but I really think it's gonna be right around like, I don't know, 5%. Did everybody get? Did everybody get 6.5%? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and, and then I like to go back and I like to see if it makes sense. Okay. Does it make sense to pay 6.5% commission on uh, buying a house? And the answer is yes, because real estate agents, all right. When you like buy or sell a house, each real estate agent gets roughly 3% and 6% would make sense, All right. So you wanna leave a 15% tip for a meal that costs $32.60, how much is the tip? Now a bunch of uh, parents have a different way of kind of doing this. Okay, some, some parents will teach their kids kind of for every $10, you leave $2 in tip, okay? And that would be for like a 20% tip. So here, if you wanna leave the exact percent tip, we're just gonna do, and I like to do the, the proportion stuff, but there's actually another way, okay? So if you write out an equation of like 3260, and I wanna find 15% of that, I'm simply gonna do 3260 and of means multiplication. So I'm gonna do of, all right? And then I'm gonna have 15% and I write a percentage 0.15. So 15% of 3260. So if I do 3260 times 0.15, I get $4.89. Now, how did I know 15% uh, was 0.15? Well, 15 divided by 100 is uh, 0.15. A new car costs $29,750, which is approximately 115% of what a comparable car cost three years ago. What did the car cost three years ago? Now, does anybody know what it's called when the price goes up? Julia, do you know what it's called when the price goes up uh, for something over the course of like a couple of years? Markup. What was that? Markup. Well, that's a different term. Yeah, that's typically in the, um, in, in the like retail market. All right, so you're not wrong, but there's another word I'm thinking of. It starts with an I. Franklin, 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 
All right, moving on to Ed. Ed? Yeah. Ed, what's it called when the price of something goes up over the course of a couple of years? It's big in the social studies class. It starts with an I. Incline or increase? No, you're close though. What if I said- Inflation. Who, who said that? Hans? Justin. Hey, who said that? Justin. Uh, ooh, Justin, nicely done. Inflation. So the inflation across this, uh, across these years is what causes the cost of a car to go up. So now how do I figure this out? All right, so here we go. A new car cost 29,000. $750. This is today's price, okay? And it says, which is 115% of what the car cost three years ago. So I'm gonna write three years ago, okay? I'm gonna call that X. And the percent it went up was 115%, which is written as 1.15. Now, if I were to divide both sides, by 1.15, I'll get the cost of what the car was three years ago. And Jay, what did you get for the cost of the car? Jay? Oh boy. Let's go with Isaac. Yeah. What did you get for the cost of the car? Gabby? Are all, am I on like mute again? No. I got 0. 0.86. What did you get? Was that Chris? Chris, what'd you get? That wasn't me. Oh. Who said they got an answer? Me. I got an answer. I said something, but somebody else said something too. Okay. Yeah. Well, when I do $29,750 divided by 1.15, I get $25,869 and 57 cents. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Using ratios. Ratios are used to compare two things. Okay. Generally of the same, um, like units, like meters to meters, minutes to like minutes, like time to time, things like that. Okay. Uh, we can also use ratios like boys to girls, all right, or teachers to students. It's all about like people. Um, rates are more like miles per hour, things that are kind of like not of the same um, units. So when I'm dealing with ratios, typically I just want to write it as a simplified fraction. For example, at, okay, 12 ounces to 20 ounces, okay? There's a couple different ways we can write this. We could write it using the word two. We could write it using... The dots, I typically write it as a fraction, such as 12 over 20. All right, so 12 over 20, I would rewrite as, let's see, three over five. So it'd be three ounces to five ounces. Now, Justin. What seems to be a problem in B? What might I have an issue with in B? Uh, 
Uh, it's minutes to hours. So how many minutes are in an hour? 60. 60, so two hours would be how many minutes? 120. Now, why did I choose to go um, with converting hours to minutes instead of minutes to hours? Well, I like to take the bigger units and make them smaller so I'm not like dealing with uh, like fractions or decimals. So my point is, if I take 45 minutes and I make it into hours, it's gonna be 0.75 hours. Even though at the end I'll get the same thing, it's just not as clean. So I'll take the hours, which are my bigger units and make them into smaller units, which are minutes. So 45 over 120. Now, using my calculator, I can type in 45 divided by 120, and then I can hit math, enter, enter. And that's going to give me a reduced fraction of what, Jake Stevens? Ooh, you guys are off your games today. Chris Dolan, what did you get for your fraction? Three eighths. So it would be three over eight. So three minutes to eight minutes. All right. How many pints are in a gallon? Ooh, does anybody know that one? Eight. Eight? How do you know that? What was that, Lance? That was Cody. Oh, Cody. How do you know that? I don't know. I just know it. Is it because you're in the pool world? No, not even close. All right. Well, let's see if he's right. Cody, how many pints are in a quart? I have no idea. Two or something. Two, two or four. Very good. There's two pints to a quart. Okay. So like the Gatorade bottles, like the big ones you get from like Acme, they're a quart. And like a water bottle is a pint. So two of those water bottles fill up that quart. And there's four quarts to a gallon. So therefore, Cody was right in saying eight because two pints to a quart, four quarts to a gallon. So two times four is eight. So this, Cody, is one pint over eight pints. And I can't reduce that. Lance. Lance, what is 120 meters over 180 meters? Um, hold on, let me think about this. You can use your graphing calculator. And then. Uh, so we have to do 120 divided one, by 180, and one then third. math, enter, enter. Yeah, one third. One third? No, I don't think it's one third. Did you do 120 no. over 180? Because I get 12 over 18, and then six goes into both of those, so I got two over three. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Lance, you have to hit 120 divided by 180, enter, and then you hit that enter, enter. Hannah. Hannah, how many yeah. inches are in a foot? I don't know. Yes, you do. How many no. inches are on a ruler? Uh, wait, what? Well, how many inches are on a ruler? Twelve. Talk to Hannah, Dave. Twelve? Twelve. So how many inches are in four feet? I don't know. Yes, you do, because I know you have a calculator there. Well, yeah. But so like, it's four times 12. Oh, 60 or 48, right? 48. So four feet is going to be written as 48 inches. So we have 48 over eight. Now, Hannah, can you do 48 divided by eight? Six. So I'm going to write this as six inches 
to one inch. All right, Jake, since you want to participate, here you go. Ready, Jake? Yeah. How many ounces are in a pound? How many ounces are in a pound? Yeah. Nope. Uh, Fifty. Nope. I'm gonna give you a hint, Jake. It's sixteen. So how many ounces are in a pound? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. okay. Now I know this because I'm a, you know, I'm a wrestler, and I know how much everything weighs. And like I have to know if I drink a bottle of water, that's gonna weigh one pound. So if there is five pounds, Jake. How many ounces is that? So five, five pounds, then it's, um, hold on. Sixty-four. Five times sixteen, Jake, it's eighty. Yes. So five times 16 is 80. So I have 80 pounds or 80 ounces, sorry, 80 ounces over 24 ounces. Now what's 80 over 20, Jake? So do 80 divided by 20, math, enter, enter. And what do you got? Uh, 3.3. Three, three, et cetera. Now you hit math and enter, enter, and what do you got? Oh. You get 10 ounces over three ounces. Now, why are we going through all this stuff? Well, let's say you're creating a scale drawing, okay? You're gonna need to have a conversion, okay? All the maps and social, social studies have that little key in the corner that tells you like one inch equals like, so many miles and it's very crucial or maybe you are um doing a mixture for the pool okay and you need to put uh, cleaning supplies in it so it needs to be like one ounce of chlorine to every 64 ounces of water or whatnot so we use them all the time now i like this one I like this section a lot. Better buy. Julia. Yeah. Julia, do you ever go to the grocery store and think, should I buy like the big bag of candy or like the small bag of candy? Do you ever do that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. No, uh, I'm glad you're just saying yes to appease me. So when you guys go to the grocery store, right, you're going to have to determine whether you guys, like whether you should buy like the big bag or the small bag. And the best way to do that is to come up with the unit price. Because what I found is, do you guys know about Frosties at Wendy's? Any you guys get Frosties? Yeah. Okay. Now what I found out was that there's three different sizes. There's the small, medium, and large. And you would think the more you buy, the better deal you get. And it's actually not true. It was actually, you got the best deal with the small Frosty than you did with the large Frosty. And the medium Frosty was the worst. So which is the better buy? Is it better to get the 12 ounce box of cereal so 12 ounce for 2.79, or the 16 ounce for 3.59. So how do I determine this? Well, it's easy. We're just gonna divide the two things. So everybody, we're gonna do 2.79 divided by 12. 279 divided by 12, and we got approximately 23 cents. 
Okay? Lori told him. 23.25. Now, for the other one, we're going to do 359 divided by 16. And we get, in this case, 22.4375. Which one's the better deal, the blue or the red? The red. The red. <laughs> All right. So the 16 ounce is cheaper per ounce. It's the better buy. So here, which is the better buy? The 14 and a half ounce bag of chips. Or the five and a half ounce bag. for 99 cents. So I'm gonna do 99 cents divided by 5.5. And I get 18 cents an ounce. Or 232 divided by 14.5, I'm gonna get 16 cents an ounce. So again, the more I bought, the better deal it is. And that's why when you guys go to like Costco and stuff like that, you get better prices on things. Yes, it costs more, but you get a better deal on the stuff. Okay. All right, a couple more. We have proportions here. And let's see, got five minutes so I can get this done. So you are driving from the New York City to Phoenix. A trip is 2,450 miles. You begin the trip with a full tank of gas. After traveling 424 miles, you re refill the tank for 40 bucks. How much should you plan to spend on gasoline for the entire trip? Well. Couple different ways to do this. All right, let's set up a proportion. So we got for forty dollars, we get four hundred and twenty-four miles. I want to know how much will it cost me for twenty-four fifty. Notice I put dollars on top and miles on bottom. So now I'm going to do a cross multiplication. So I'm going to do 2450 times 40. That's going to be 98,000. And that's going to equal 424x. So I divide by 424, and I get it's going to approximately cost me. $231.13. For the next one, it says three cups of flour are required to make a batch of cookies. So three cups, one batch. How many cups are required to make three and a half batches? Same thing. I'm going to do three times 3.5, and I get 10.5 equals 1x. So it's going to be 10 and a half cups. A quality control engineer finds three defective units in a sample of 120. So three. Defective out of 120 units. 
is what is the expected number of defective out of 5,000? So I'm going to do 3 times 5,000, so it's 15,000, equals 120x. Divide by 120. And we're going to get 125 defectives. Sorry if I'm rushing. I'm just trying to get through these last couple. And as always, I can just post it up and you guys can watch it and slow it down. So a tractor uses five gallons of diesel fuel to plow for 150 minutes. So five gallon for 105 minutes. Assuming conditions remain the same, determine the number of gallons for six hours. Now six hours, I have to do a little conversion. So six hours equals six times 60, 360 minutes. Now, why did I do that? Well, I already know it. what my conversion is for 105 minutes, so I need everything to be in minutes. So I'm going to do 5 times 360. I'm going to get 1,800 equals 105x. Divide by 105. And I'm going to get approximately 17.14 gallons. 